statements are true or false, then rewrite false statements to make them true. Dang it. Imagine when, what happens when you read directions. Yeah, uh, yeah I know, right? You, told me I just know. Really you get all the points when you, you do that. Really? Just that what? Whatever just part to make so it true. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one. So you have to stop now. So if you didn't get it done, you're going to miss one point off for your false ones. Number one, 
is sacred scripture records the story of the relationship between God and his people. So one should be sacred scripture. If you didn't get that, write it in. Because this is a combo test. Remember what's combo test mean? You can use your notes. No. Uh, it's, um, can you use your book? Some from the book. Some, some from Mr. Hale. So this Today. is the part from the book. I could be pulling questions right off this review, hint, hint. Today. Number two, the complete list of sacred texts is called the canon of scripture. So two should be canon. Number three, the authors of the gospels called evangelists. We didn't have time to go over this, but what is an evangelist? In fact, that should be your primary role as a Christian. We're called to be evangelists. Spread God's word. How do we do that? So if you write that on an essay, to spread God's word. That's not going to cut it. I'm going to ask you what? what is that? How do you do that? Going, what does it mean to spread God's word? And teach others to so how many people, so yeah, one way is you can actually use the word. You can tell people. How many people in here have told somebody about Jesus dying and rising from the dead that didn't know it before? Who'd you tell? My neighbors. What what are they? Huh? Are they Buddhists, Hindus, or just I don't know. I didn't so ask why. How did it come about? Huh? How did it come about? They asked me what school I went to. And you said St. Joe's and then what? And then they were like, well, what do you learn there? And I told them about it. And what was their response? Um, that they wanted to enroll their kids. Mm. Oh, you're, you're recruiting too. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Joey. Oh, my little sister when she was younger. Okay. Okay. I told also my friends. And they're Lutheran. But Lutherans believe... The not same Lutheran, not Lutheran, uh, maybe, uh, I don't really know what it is. So the good news to Lutherans, and the good news to Methodists, and the good news to Presbyterians is the same as the good news to who? Us. Us. There's no difference in that good news. What's different is how we practice that. So, what's the other way to spread the good news? This time, this year, you're either spreading it or you're you're uh, actually working against it. Because, like in mass, we sing songs. Yes, but people in mass are people that already know the good news, right? Aren't they? So, oh, an evangelist Witness. is spreading the good news to people that don't know the good news. So, we've read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or at least excerpts of it. That's why they're called evangelists, because they told the good news. They told the story about Jesus and what he did. Sometimes we don't realize that there are millions of people in the world that what? Have never heard that message. Have never heard it. It's totally new. So a Buddhist would never have heard that message. A Hindu would never have heard that message. And a Muslim wouldn't have heard that message. 
But this is, what does this mean, witness? Well, at a trial, you give, a witness would give testimony. Testimony is if you're saying something. But witness, our witness, is where we show our faith. So this is where you tell your faith. This is where you show your faith. So every time you treat somebody with respect, you're doing what? Witness. You're giving a witness of the good news. You're giving a witness. Every time something bad happens to you, and you say, you still, I say, I still trust God. My daughter, I told you, she's going to Columbia to teach at a school there. And most of the people, if she said, well, they'll say, how much are you getting paid? And she'd say, I'm getting $500 a month. If you lived in Minnesota and tried to live on $500 a month, what? It would be really hard. She could get the same job in Minnesota make thousands of dollars a month. So most of the people are going to ask her what? Why would you go teach in Columbia for $500 a month when you can make three, four, ten times as much teaching in Minnesota? Then she has an opportunity to what? Tell the good news. So she's teaching in a school in Columbia that is made up of mis children of missionaries. So they don't want to charge extra tuition to these missionaries because they're already sacrificing to be a missionary to the various tribes in Columbia. So she has a chance to tell the good news to people. But so do we. Every time people look at our lives, they should look at our lives and it should be different from the rest of the world. That's our witness. When people look at your life and say, you look different. What? Why would you do that? That's crazy. Then you have an opportunity to tell them. But you also, you know, the opposite. Just because you guys wear uniforms, automatically everybody outside of here that isn't a Catholic, they're going to associate what? Yeah, Everything you do is, that's what Catholics do. I, did, did I tell you about my athletic conference? Mm -hmm. That they were the worst? Okay. No. The, the one school that was Catholic in our athletic conference yeah. when I was in yeah. high school was the worst school, known to be the worst. So they were given what kind of witness? Terrible witness, okay? Bad witness. I had to convince my friends. That's not really what Catholics believe in, and think and do. Number four. It is important for us to know God's laws so our conscience can help us. Or is conscience. Where do you get your conscience? What? Or his conscience, where do you get it? Ah, it's a free gift. What do we do with it, though? You nurture it or not, your conscience. So if you don't nurture your conscience, what happens? In the end, you'll die. You know... You know why they won't accept lie detector tests because for testimony at a trial? Because there are some people that have lied so much, okay? Their conscience basically has been improperly formed. When we lie, basically inside of us, there are physiological things that happen to us. 
because that's God made it that way. We were supposed to be made to lie. So what happens is your heart rate changes, okay? And they can monitor all that. That's what a lie detector does. It monitors change in your body when a person lies. But if a person hasn't properly formed their conscience, if they've lied so often, what happens? It doesn't work. Number five, five, the Gospels present Jesus' life, ministry, and teachings. So five is Gospels. Six is true. Even though the Bible was written by humans, God is the author because he inspired it. What's the term for that? Divine inspiration. Divine inspiration. Number seven, when John writes in his Gospel that the Word was God, he's referring to the Holy Spirit. That is false. The word is who? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Who is it referring to? God. God. Yeah, God who, though? The Son. The Son, Jesus. You're referring to Jesus. So that's what you should have changed it to. Number eight, the primary sense of scripture refers to the actual words that have been recorded. That is false. That's called the literal sense. So eight should have been false, and he should have changed it to the literal sense. And again, if you didn't change it, you just take off one. The false ones are worth two. Number nine. The spiritual sense of scripture includes allegorical sense showing how certain events pointed to Christ. That's true. Number 10, the letters of Paul are the central books of scripture because they present Jesus' life, ministry, and teaching. That is false. What is the central books of scripture? Joey, what are the central books of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the central books. If your paper does not have your name on it, take a point off. Well, do we not have to do part C? Part C? No, I said you never have to do part C unless what? I told you. That might be an essay. That could be a good essay question on the test, though. So, 14 points. How much were the true and false ones worth? False ones are worth two. Okay. True ones are worth one. Bella. What is six and then ten? Six is true. 10 is false because it should be the Gospels. Joey. Um, 8 was false, but what can they change? It's changed the uh, primary sense to literal sense. Writer. Bella. What'd you get? You're still figuring yours? Avery? <laughs> Lily? Ben? Twelve. Allison? Fourteen. Lucy? Grayson? How many? Gianna? Andrew? Mikey? 
Joey. Thirteen. Clara. Ten. Maddie. Thirteen. Christian. Eleven. Christian, I'm still looking for your Chris for your scripture poster. Yeah. And you take your gym or your recess time. Or just do it over the weekend. And I won't have to do that. Ewan. Eleven. Emily. Ten. Greta. Ten. Lewis. Six. Allison. Oh, um, I got eleven. So we're going to review for how long we got? Four minutes? Three. Three minutes. Quick as hand. No indicator. What are the two parts of the Bible? Joey. Old Testament. Yes. What are the stories in the Bible that we're supposed to teach a lesson? the part of the Bible that has lots of prayers of praise? Psalms. Psalms. How come there are four Gospels instead of one? Uh, for all the different teachings for math, for all like the um, different people writing them, like the different parts of the Bible. I'll give you one is for different people wrote them, yes, but the question really is why did well, that's that's the same as her. Because they were writing for different audiences. Okay? They were writing for different audiences. In the maths. What is the part where the Bible is read called? In the Mass? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Mass yesterday. Okay. You guys, it wasn't, oh, yours was last week you proclaimed it, okay? What's that part of the Mass called? In fact, the Mass is really divided into two yeah. parts. One is called the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Okay. The other is called the Liturgy of the Word. The Word. Oh my gosh, I was get Who's the person that does that proclaiming? The priest. No. I'll okay. give you that one. He does the Gospel. But the other readings, who proclaims oh. that? Oh, oh, oh. The question is, what is that person called? That person is called the same in every mass. The person. Just like when you guys <laughs> proclaim it. Who proclaimed the first yeah. reading last mass? Me. I did. So Joy was this person. What's that person the called? Teller. The reader. The teller. No. The, the fortune teller. Wait, is it yeah, actually yeah, the is. fortune teller? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lector. 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 Lector.